Hello everyone, I am Allison Gonzalez. I'm a trainer here at Pragmatic Works and welcome to the fourth episode of my Teams series. So in our first episode, we did an intro to Teams. In the second, we went over Teams and channels. In our third one, the last one, we did chatting about chats, talked about all of our chat features. And this one is going to be the first in our series to talk about meetings. There's a lot of aspects in meetings. We are gonna spread that across a few different episodes, but this first one is perfect for anyone who has to join a Teams meeting for the first time. Maybe you're used to doing your meetings in a different program and you have to do one in Teams and you wonder what's going on. This is gonna be the perfect video for you. So let's get into some slides, look at what we're gonna cover with meetings and then actually get into Teams to demo out, start a meeting, have some fun clicking around, looking at some of the basic settings, where the general layout of things are that you can expect in a Teams meeting. All right, so let's take a look at some slides to go over some things in meetings before we jump in. So first off, with your meeting navigation, here's some of the buttons you're gonna see across the top. You're gonna be joining, hopefully, through the app. If you've looked at the other videos before, you know that the app is far superior to joining in the web version. So joining with that Microsoft, that computer app, is going to have a better experience overall for your meetings. So once you're inside that meeting, you're gonna have some icons at the top. If you click on people, you're gonna see all of the participants that are in that meeting. If you are joining, you'll be able to mute yourself from here. You'll also be able to mute other people if you are kind of leading that meeting. Chat is going to show you the chat, so you should have access to that. You'll be able to share links. And like we discussed in our last episode about chats, this meeting chat is going to be saved in your chat, so you'll be able to refer to anything later on from the chat. Next up, we have reactions. So without having to type anything into the chat, you can easily give one of these reactions, whichever one you like or is applicable to that situation. This is also where you are able to raise your hand. And so you are able to, if you have a question, raise your hand, click that last button, and wait to be called upon to be addressed by whoever is talking in the meeting. Now again, there's a lot of other features in meetings that we are going to get to in other videos like breakout rooms, team live, and such. You wanna go over the basics so you are comfortable in a meeting your first time. I also wanna talk about some best practices for screen sharing. So you all know that scary moment when you have to share your screen in a meeting and you wanna make sure you're sharing the correct content. Well, you are able to share just a specific screen. So if you have your, just let's say a laptop and then another screen attached to that, you can choose which one you want to do. I generally have three going on. So we can see in this example, there are three different screens I would be able to share. You're also able to share just a program window. Now this is a great option a lot of people do not realize is there because you are able to set, just let's say you wanted to share a Word doc as you're talking about it, you could share just that Word doc. Then you don't have that weird scramble to make sure you're closing out your Teams or Slack messages or hide any notifications or your emails, anything that no one else should really be seeing on that call. So instead, you can just share that program window. You pick that, that's all that people are going to be able to see. So that's a fantastic option to make sure that everything else stays out of sight. You do need to obviously have that item open already to share it. So open that first, you will then have it available to you in your Windows section to then just share that program. <clears throat> there we can see we've got lots of different things from Chrome windows, browsers, windows, to PowerPoints, to PDFs, all different file types. All right, let's now head over into Teams and actually play around, start a meeting, and have some fun. Here we are in Teams, and let's start a meeting, take a tour around, click some buttons, and get comfortable. So I can start a meeting from a variety of places, and we'll talk more about our scheduling in another one. But we are gonna just start a meeting right now, get into it and talk through some options. So I'm just gonna start a quick meeting. You at any point in time can also go ahead and start a meeting just with yourself going into your calendar. Again, we'll talk more on starting those, but 
definitely would suggest if you are about to have a Teams meeting and you've never done one before, start with yourself and so you're able to practice, click around and know what to expect. All right, so first off, we have our buttons up here. We have our people, and that is gonna show everyone that is in here. Right now, it is just myself in this nice test environment I have created. Also could suggest to send it to my real self as well. You can send a request to join. I can decide to mute or unmute myself from right here or from up here as well. I will get these notices every single time I start talking every few minutes because Power BI is gonna help you out. That way you don't get too far into a conversation and when you're on mute, you really should be talking, that you'll be reminded of that. Under chat, we can see our meeting chat so we could type anything we wanted over here that is going to be saved into that chat. We're gonna again have a more um, in-depth, a lot more options to have here for all of these editing options. You'll recognize these if you watched our chat video. Um, all of the options that we have for formatting, we can mark things as important or even urgent where that's gonna send out a lot of notifications. We can attach files from right here where I can go out to OneDrive or upload from my computer to have those files. I can also just drop links to files as well. I can have lots of emojis that I can um, use. I can have GIFs as well. I appreciate a good GIF in a conversation. These unfortunately will be turned off by a lot of organization in addition to stickers, which is our other option right here. So all of that is in the chat and you can kind of put as many things as you would like to have in that chat. This chat will also be saved in the chat section of your Teams right over here. So you'll be able to refer to that later on. The next one we have is reactions. So I can give any of these reactions and they will pop up on the screen of everyone else, kind of just float in this area. They'll also, if your kind of icons are set there, they'll also show up over your icons so you can see exactly what reaction you want to have. It's also where you're able to raise your hand and you can also raise your hand with the control shift K to lower it as well. And you can see this is how it's gonna to appear to everyone. And we'll all be able to see everyone in that meeting who has their hand raised. And then obviously the person that is speaking can call on you, then make sure that you go back and lower that hand or do control shift K to do that. So control shift K to raise and lower your hand, um, easy access. We're gonna cover breakout rooms and more in our next section. I just want you all being comfortable in your first Teams meeting. The next thing that I wanna talk about is our sharing abilities. So under share, I will be able to pick the screen I'm using. I have two screens that I have access to that I could use. And I also have five separate windows that I could choose from. So I could decide to share any of these screens. I could have a little bit of inception if I decide to share this screen on top of my screen and share everything in this meeting. Or I could pick the specific window that I want to share. So the window that you share does need to be open. Um, and as long as you have that file open, whether that is a PowerPoint, whether that is a Excel file, whether that is a Microsoft doc, you would be able to go right to here to share that. So I could pick any of these that I wanted. I could pick any of these to share and it would pop up. To stop your share, it's in the same exact button. So anytime I'm sharing, it's gonna be this button right here. And to stop my share, it is that button as well. If I am sharing a specific window of content, so one specific item like a Word doc, as soon as I close that Word doc out, it is going to immediately stop my share. So nothing else is going to be visible to anyone else. So no meetings, um, no other notifications, any other things popping up. So you can really make sure you keep kind of your privacy and that's a good one to have. I can say how many times in trainings when people share their screens, I definitely can see access to emails, probably shouldn't be shown and all those things. So sharing a window is a great way to kind of keep people from looking around your computer and seeing things they probably should not. So that is your 
quick introduction going into a Teams meeting. So if you have a Teams meeting scheduled soon, never used a program before, so simple. You are able to turn your camera on right from here. You're able to turn your microphone off from here. You're able to share your screen, see all the people in the chat, in the meeting. You're able to um, have a chat and have watch that conversation, view any links or files that are shared from there have your reactions right from here. So those are the basics of a meeting. If you are looking for some more in depth, stay tuned for our next episode where we are going to get into breakout rooms in live. We are gonna talk about whiteboarding and lots of other meeting features we are going to get into. So I will see you all in the next video. So thank you all so much for joining me in this video. If you found it helpful, you feel a lot more confident going into that first Teams meeting, definitely like it and of course subscribe to get the most up-to-date info for when we release additional videos. So if you do have any Teams questions, make sure you put them in the comments below. Just might be able to use them in the next video. Also, if you don't wanna wait for the next video and you want that in-depth knowledge right now, you can head on over to our on-demand platform, which I will have linked below for you, and you can take our Teams for the Consumer class. If you do not yet have an account with us, you can use code Allison30 to get 30% off. Happy learning, and I will see you in the next video.